Okay, ladies. Ow! Thank you. You guys are crazy. Snap! Um, so here's the deal. Anybody here in a relationship? Anybody sad that you gotta go back to it? Anybody have a husband that's still wondering why you're doing this? Why are these men so messed up? Anybody wonder that? Anybody have children? Gifts from heaven? Sent here to just suck the life out of you? Any of you have those? I have six. You jealous? Okay, I don't blame you. Um, anybody ever wondered, why doesn't everybody relate as effectively and brilliantly as I do? <laughs> anybody ever read a blog about that? It's perfect. Anybody writing a blog about that? How to be like me? Anybody got that one? <laughs> so here's the deal. Um, I want to get some help here. But now here, I know you don't need help relationally, but that's what I want to talk about, relationship issues. But I know you don't have problems because look at you, you're the bomb. Now, the person on your right though is seriously messed up. <laughs> don't look at them, don't look at them, don't look at them, don't look at them, they don't know, they don't even know. They have no clue they're jacked up, okay, they don't. They think they're just normal. And so uh, what we're going to do is whenever today, if, when we're doing this, I want you to think, of, because um, I know you don't have relationship problems, but I want you to think of some of the people that read your stuff, some of the people that are on your site, some of the people you're trying to impact, okay? Because they may need some of this. One of the first things we've got to get very clear is that you, you get relationships, right? You get them, okay? You own them. How many of you have ever noticed, though, even though you're great and you can snap, you know that, how many of you notice, though, that there's still things that make them difficult? Like what? What makes a relationship difficult? Chocolate. Chocolate. Is that what you said? Yeah. Weird. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> Not what I was thinking. But chocolate could work. What else makes it hard? Communication. How many of you have ever, ever noticed that um, you want to communicate, for example, and your partner doesn't? They only want one thing. Chocolate. Chocolate. Yeah, girlfriend. Uh, that is just, by the way, that is a line you will never hear in a group of men screamed out. Chocolate! You don't hear that. It's so weird. You'll hear everything else but chocolate. Uh, what else gets in the way of a good relationship? Idiots? Men. Men. No, that was different. How many of you have ever noticed that the men just don't quite get it like you do? And I've actually researched this. You know we're different, don't you? True, true fact. We are different. Did you know that from birth, women maintain more eye contact than men do? Did you know that? From birth, you know you're watching more. The average gaze of a female when you're talking to someone is 12 seconds, okay? That's awkward. <laughs> That's a very long gaze, okay? The average gaze of a man is guess how long? Three seconds, okay? Unless you're really pretty. Then it's like an awkward two minutes and the police get called. So uh, we're sitting there. And as guys, we're, we're supposed to pay attention, and you want us to communicate with you, don't you? Why? Why don't you leave us alone? Why don't you just let us touch you and leave us alone? Okay? Well, this is what I've learned, and this is what I teach to all the men in the world, because you all, you'll relate to this. It's not that you have this problem, but the person on your right does. Um, sometimes you feel like your man doesn't get you because he only wants one thing. So you're like, look, I'm not a piece of meat. If you want more affection, we need to communicate. You ever, heard, you ever said that? Okay, it's really cool. So this is what I teach the men. If that's true, then isn't it true that on the other side, that, um, this sounds crazy, 
that if you say to your husband, hey, can we talk, what's he supposed to say? Because isn't talking to a man what touching is? No, talking to a woman is what touching is to a man. Do you think that's the same? Isn't that weird? So guess what? This is what I teach him. It's so cool. But don't tell your men. Because then they'll do this to you. So when you sit there and say, honey, can we talk? Guess what he's supposed to say? Hey! Not a big fat ear! <laughs> if you want more talk, we have to touch first. <laughs> I actually tell him to say that. Okay? Two of them have been killed. <laughs> big mistake. Big mistake. But we have these differences, the communication differences. What other differences? Personality. personality. How many of you are married to someone without a personality? <laughs> and you're just sick of it. Grow one, dude. Grow a personality. Read my blog. <laughs> my blog's all about growing personality. Jeez. What else gets in the way? Kids. Kids. How could a child, how could a beautiful, innocent child how could they negatively affect your relationship? Are you kidding me? We found, we have six, we found that they ruin everything we do. Now we're crazy, Kay, but we believe, it's my wife's idea because I wouldn't do it, but she believes we should pray every night. Pray with the kids. Okay, so we have this cool thing that goes down every night. It goes like this. It's called the prayer fight. It sounds weird. It's just something we do. My wife will say, Kay, let's pray. And none of our kids move. They just sit there like, now, let's pray now. 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 Pray now. Everybody, now. Kneel. 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 On your knees, kneel. Both knees, kneel. Now. Put that ball down. Now. Give me your phone. Give me your phone. Give me your phone. Give me your phone or you're going to need this prayer. And I need it. Kneel, kneel, okay. Now, who's gonna pray? Who's gonna, oh, none of you are gonna pray. None of you wanna pray? Oh, not you, you always pray. No, you, you the infidel. I want the infidel teenager to pray. And you mean it, you mean it. Hey, and I'm watching you, you close your eyes. Don't worry how I'm watching you when we're praying, that's what mommies do. I learned it on a blog. Okay, now mean, okay, got it? And I want you all to feel the spirit. <laughs> Isn't that great? Children, gifts from heaven to ruin prayers. Husbands, gifts from heaven to ruin what? Life, no. No. We're not here to do that. We're here to just try to slowly stretch you out. We're not even here to do that. We're just different. And if you notice, these differences can make us or they can break us. You buy that? They can make us stronger. They can lead us up into greater levels of living or they can pull us down and just slowly destroy us. Any other differences that get in the way? Money. money. How many of you have so much money it's killing you and you're sick of it? <laughs> the social media is just driving me rich. God, I hate it. What do you do with all this money? You just have to buy silly stuff and shop just to spend it. Wouldn't that be great? How many of you get anything for that? Here's a huge difference I've noticed, and it's because I am one. I've noticed that men use their brains differently than women do. There are some men, I know you won't relate to them, that don't even appreciate that you're bloggers. They're still wondering why you need to talk to so many people that you don't know. <laughs> know what I mean? And they're wondering why you're here. Because you're not making money at it. And they don't realize that you want to change the world. Thank you. And they're trying to figure out why you'd want to change the world when you don't even change the sheets on the bed. <laughs> why don't you focus on the sheets first? <laughs> Well, I don't like sheets. So now we're fighting about the sheets. So the sheets become the smoke of our marriage. And I found that smoke's not even the real deal. You want to bet that? Have you ever thought about something stupid with your partner and just tried to figure out what is the big deal? I had a client come in. She had bought a uh, $400 purse. Oh, ah, it's ridiculous, he said. 
Nobody needs a $400 badge. She says, oh, really? How much was your golf bag? So, and, it's like, what do you mean? How much is my golf bag? We're just talking about your purse. It's like, I know, but you just said no one needs a $400 bag, so I'm wondering how much your purse is, how much, I mean, how much your golf bag is. He's like, I don't know, three something, 370. And her head spun all the way around. And fire shot out of her eyes. And she talked like this. And she says, you don't think I need a $400 bag, but you have a $400 bag? And they started fighting about the bag. What do you want to bet this has nothing to do with the bag? Isn't that weird? So why are they fighting? Because he's an idiot. And he doesn't give me chocolate. Thank you again. Um, that's my mother. Great lady. Great lady. Changed my life about 40 years ago. Um, so we've got this difference. I call that stuff the smoke. Then all of a sudden, they're no longer fighting about the bags. Then he has to defend why he needs an expensive bag. He says, honey, I put $2,000 worth of clubs in that bag. And her head spun all the way around again. The fire shot out her eyes, and they're starting to fight. And now she gets to out. Oh, my gosh. Sap. I didn't think I'd get emotional. But I am. And she says, you always did love shopping or golfing more than me. Now we're fighting about golfing. So we went from her purse to his bag to his clubs to golfing. What's the real issue? Is it communication? How many of us don't know? But we're still fighting. So now we're on that tear, and so she's like, fine, I guess if you need an expensive uh, bag to put your clubs in, I need an expensive purse to put my credit cards in. It's like, your credit cards? Yeah. How much, how much credit card debt do we have? She says, $15,000. Oh, and he got sad. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to do this. And he started getting sad because you always did love shopping more than me. Now what are we fighting about? Shopping? And then someone throws in there, your mother, and then mom gets involved, you know, that happens. <laughs> what do you want to bet? This is about none of that. I call none of that the real issue. I call all of that the smoke. That's not the real issue. But that's what we fight about. You know what I mean? Just like we fight about everything with anybody that would ever listen to us. We'll talk about the fight. We'll argue about the fight. Some of us don't even fight. We just run away. What do we call them? Man, wussies, stand here and fight like a woman. <laughs> Statistically, men are different than we are. Uh, we are, I say we, let me tell you why. <laughs> I had this surgery. <laughs> it hurt like a mother. And um, I was raised by a pack of women, four of them. My mother and three sisters. They tortured me. And as a child, they slowly warped my brain into a female brain, which is so weird when you're at gym. You're at the gym working out, and you got this girl brain, and you're thinking, oh my heck, does my butt look big in this? And it's not, it doesn't. But here's what I started thinking as I was watching my mom and my sisters. They would have the same conversation, I swear, every day. Every day, the exact same conversation. Jess a pig. Jeff is my sister's boyfriend. Do I think he's hot? That was my other sister. My older sister. Wait till you see the college boys. And then my divorced mom would say, I hate men. <laughs> and I heard the same conversation over and over. And I'm like, why are we talking about this? Why? And they'd have it every week. We'd go to my grandma's house. Same time. Just a jerk. I think he's hot. Wait till you see the college boys. I hate men. <laughs> and then at the end of it, my mom would hit the eight track tape in. And Helen Reddy's song, I Am Woman, Hear Me Roar. Ow! Thank you, Mom. And the feminist anthem would come on. And I was the only boy in my whole neighborhood who knew all four verses. <laughs> I rocked it. And I realized right then that they're not like me. So I decided I'm going to fix this. So I stood up in the back seat of the Impala, the car we used to drive, which, because back then you could do that. And I said, dump him. Dump the loser. He's an idiot. And all of the four women looked back, because they happened to all be in the front row, front seat. And they looked back and they just rolled their eyes and said, men. And right then, I knew that I didn't want to talk about it if we're not going to fix it. 
And I realized for some odd reason, they all wanted to keep talking about it without any desire to fix it. And it was the weirdest thing. It's like it's a big beach ball. They all just want to hit. Let me get it. My deck. My deck. My deck. Just a pig. I got it. Oh, I got it. I know what to say here. I think he's hot. Good job. Good job, Stacy. That was good. Boom. Wait till you see the guys in college. And my mom, boom, spikes it. I hate men. <laughs> Every single day. Right then I realized, that's it. They're weird. I'm different. And I started researching it. This is what I found out. Did you know, ladies, from birth, you use more of your brain when you talk. Thank you, Mom. Uh, my mom's very verbal today. And she's in all parts of the room. She's the all-knowing mom. She's, um, so we're sitting there, and I did some research on this. And when women talk, they put a woman, a woman in a PET scan. And as they're studying her brain, she's just talking. And they notice her entire brain lights up when she talks. <laughs> And her whole brain is being used while communicating. Is that not the weirdest? So they get her out of the scan and they put Larry in. They're like, Larry, get in there. We want to see what your brain does. And they're like, say something, Larry. And he's like, eh. <laughs> no, Larry, use a sentence. Eh. Hey, what's up, dude? Yo. Okay. And they realize Larry's whole brain doesn't light up. Only half of Larry's brain lights up. And guess what that means? That while communicating, men use half their brain. Now tell me you didn't already know that. <laughs> they didn't need an expensive study. But women use your entire brain. What advantage would that give you, ladies? You use the right side and the left side. The left side, the content, the data. The right side, the feelings. Notice what you're doing as bloggers. Left side, data, information. Content, right side, feelings, pictures, cute, curly cues with lots of polka dotty thing images. You're using your whole brain. And how many times has your husband looked at you and said, Why? Why? Why do you take something as easy as a web page and complicate it so much? Just give the data. But you don't want to just give the data because you're using your whole brain. Have you not noticed that? You want to connect with all of you, don't you? And they're not getting it. Men tend to use the left brain. By the way, the left brain would make them stay very logical, wouldn't it? So as guys, what we tend to like is the data. We love the data. That's why have you ever gotten in a fight with your partner just because of the data? And he's like, no, 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 you did not say that. You didn't. Okay, and he'll tell you exactly what you said. You said, and they'll tell you what you said. And what, how do you dismiss that? That's well, not what I meant. And every man is like, well, why don't you say what you mean? You shouldn't have to, because if you're using your whole brain with a bunch of women that are all using their brain when you're talking, guess what happens? You all get it. My wife tries to do that with me instead of just saying it in my little left brain. So she'll go to the garbage area and she'll give it one of these. Ooh. 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 Smell that. What did I just hear? No, see, you ladies thought I heard take out the garbage. <laughs> ah, wrong. I heard, smell the garbage. It will please your wife. <laughs> okay. I will smell the garbage and please my wife. I will do anything to serve her if she will just be quiet after. <laughs> and I smell it. Oh. <laughs> That's bad. I agree. I concur. And I go back to watch my game. And she's ticked. Like, you're not taking that out? What? You're not taking that out? What out? I asked you to take that out. Uh, no, you didn't. Okay? You asked me to smell it. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Now we're fighting about what you said. And she's like, why would I ask you to smell it? And I'm like, I have no idea. I think it was gross. But I did it for you, and you should be pleased, and I will now watch the game. And then she's mad. Do I have to tell you everything I want done? And I'm like, well, honestly, I'd rather you didn't. But if you want me to do it, you'll need to tell me that. And she's, then she gets all right brain all, all over me. If you love me, 
you would know what needs to be done and what I'm thinking about even before I do. And I'm like, if you love me, we'd have sex once in a while. Okay? So I'm out of here. I'll be over here on my uh, left brain. So we do this weird brain dance, don't we? So one of our big problems, and there's huge research about this, and if I were you as a blogger, I would use this every day. Because if your audience are the ladies, I promise you, and it's, I, it sounds stereotypical, but there are huge amounts of research on this. A great book you probably ought to be reading if you've ever encountered a male that didn't seem to get you is a book by a woman named Deborah Tannen. Have you ever heard of her? She wrote a book called You Just Don't Understand. It's the differences between men and women in communication. Powerful book. She's a linguist. <laughs> what a horrible job. And what she did is she studied thousands of conversations between men and women. And she, in her structuring, so what they do is they write out everything that is said and then they code it. So she can actually see how men talk differently than women. And men use different language when we're talking. So she found out that men and women have completely different goals when talking. And some of you run into this every single day. What she found out with the women, their primary goal while talking. Now you may be different because I was raised by women and they warped me. So I have this whole brain problem. By the way, one thing about your brain really fast. Did you know that the female brain on average, um, two thirds of the brain stays awake every night when you go to bed? Have you not noticed this? Making lists. Lists! More things to do. Two-thirds stays awake. The male brain, ladies, only one-third stays awake at night. That's just to keep it breathing. Okay? And it sounds like this. In, out. In, out. In, out. All night long. Okay? Unless they have that cool mask on. <sighs> then they sound like Lord Vader, which is really cool. So, I'm sitting there. The right brain, left brain is a huge deal, right? Number one thing that women have, primary goal, listen to this, is to bond by talking. Their primary goal in conversation is bonding. Data transfer is their secondary goal. Actually, transferring a point is not half as important as the bonding they feel in the conversation. Have you ever felt that, ladies? That the words don't matter. It's what's in your heart. So grow a heart, you freak. You're scaring me. You scare me. Now listen, primary goal, bonding. Secondary goal, data transfer. Now the male brain, here's how we're different. Primary goal for a male, guess what it is? Data, sex. <laughs> I will concur. Secondary goal, we're going to get three goals in communication. All male communications to get sex, just so you know. <laughs> or dinner, if we've had sex. Um, just letting you know. Or someone to shut those kids up, okay, if we've had sex and dinner. There's a really weird order, but after that, it goes to the next thing. So the primary goal of a man while talking is data transfer. That's pretty much why we do it. <laughs> We're only talking to transfer the data. So when you say, how was your day? And he says, fine. He's thinking, job done? Data transfer? And she's like, well, um, you got any more? More what? You got any more data? No. So your day was just fine? Yep. <sighs> any of you ever disappointed with that? Like, could you dig a little deeper, dude? It was really fine. Really fine. Primary goal, data transfer. Secondary goal, are you ready for this? This will blow your mind. To maintain our ego and hierarchy. Secondary goal of a man while talking is to maintain our position in the life or relationship. So watch how weird this is. You want to talk to Bond. And when you bring up an issue that lowers my ego or my hierarchy, I yeah! Stop that! Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever had a really big issue you wanted to talk to your partner about? Like, I don't know, something like, are you going to get a job? And the minute you bring that up, why does he get mad? 
His ego is in the game. So the weird thing is, you're trying to bond by talking, and most men are trying to run away from it. Because <laughs> whenever you want to talk, it usually means I've done something stupid. Now you don't even mean to do that. Like, for example, you're worried about the taxes. Are we gonna, are, are we, and you ask something simple. You're just trying to start a conversation. Are, are we gonna pay our taxes? No, we're not. Well, I just don't want to go to jail like Bernie Madoff and everything. Are you kidding me? You think I'm dumb enough to not pay? Well, we haven't paid him yet, so I'm just wondering. You think I'm an idiot? And now all of a sudden, we're fighting. Why are we fighting? Ego. His ego's involved. Have any of you dealt with this? Not you, but the person on your right. Just look at him. Look at him. I mean, it's pitiful. Just look at him. Okay, that's enough. Um, so here's an example. Let's say you're driving down the road. As you're driving down the road, life's really good. You think you're fine. I'm the guy. Let's say I'm driving. I'm feeling really good about it. And a truck is merging on the freeway. Let's say the truck has been merging for three days. Okay? And it finally merges on. And right when it merges on, you happen to look out of the side of your eye and you're like, what the heck? And you think we're about to die. You're convinced we went under the truck and we came out and are barely alive. So you're like, we almost died. And he's like, we did not die. And now he gets frustrated with you. Now you're fighting about what? If you died or not. Oh, you want to die? I'll show you almost dying. And then he'll start to drive you right under the car, won't he? Have you ever had that fight in the car? Over anything? Over parking? Over anything? Why would you fight about how you're driving? Because you're scared. And when you're scared, you're going to want to say something. When you're unhealthy, unhappy, you're going to want to say something. And a lot of times when you say it, it totally gets me. And then guess what? Game on. I'm not! The ego is a huge deal, ladies. Have you noticed how hard it is then to bring up an issue without exciting the ego? Well, maybe you shouldn't. But some of these issues are big deals. Now, here's an example. The ego I believe men are supposed to have. I also, I, part of that, again, I believe if I historically have been the one that was supposed to stop that raging cheetah from eating my family, I think a little ego is healthy. Because the ego would get me to take on the cheetah. Even though my intellect would say, nah, you'll die. You'll die. My ego would say, hey, hey, do it for the ladies. Okay, I'll do it for the ladies. And I'm going to do it for the ladies. The reality is, I'm going to get shredded. My intellect would say, don't, 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 just run away and just run faster than the slowest lady. <laughs> See, that's intellect. It's brilliant. My ego's like, no, you protect your family, your kids, you protect everybody. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to do that. So my ego gets me to do stuff my brain would never let me do. Now, the problem is that gets us in trouble today. So I'm sitting out there, I walk out on my deck before the accident. And um, I walk out on the deck, and I'm standing there on the deck, and my kids are jumping off of our deck that's about eight feet high, eight feet off the ground, to a trampoline that's below. Right? And in my smart brain, I say, danger. That's dangerous. Right? And then uh, my kids say, my kids heard my ego, and they're like, hey, Dad, try it. <laughs> Just jump off the ledge and... Jump on the tramp. And my intellect says, no, 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 because see, that's how people die. <laughs> and daddy doesn't want to die because mommy would be devastated. <laughs> and um, my, my intellect says, yeah, we don't do that. That's how we die. And my ego says to me, well, try it. What's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> and then my intellect says, well, I don't know. How about decapitation? <laughs> How about you break something like your neck? And my ego says, you're a wuss. And my kids must have heard that because my kids are like, Dad, do it unless you're afraid. Okay, get off the tramp. Everyone off the tramp. Daddy's jumping. Daddy's jumping. Move off the tramp, everybody. So I decide I'm going to jump off the ledge. Now, by the way, the, the deck is eight feet. If you get on the banister, the railing, it's about 12 feet-ish. So I'm now 12 feet off the trampoline. Okay, now I gotta, I gotta let you in on a secret. For those of you that aren't from Utah, it snows here. I don't know if you've heard, we have the greatest snow on earth all right here. 
and it lands on my trampoline. Now, a lot of people in Utah take their trampolines down in the winter because it will stretch your trampoline. I've never done that, okay? I will from here forward, but I have never done it. And I haven't done it because I've never saw a need for it because I don't really even jump on my trampoline. And my kids love it because our trampoline is very stretchy, loosey-goosey. They can jump all over. They love it. They also weigh 60 pounds, okay? They're malnourished. And so um, I'm sitting there not thinking about the stretchiness of my trampoline. I'm thinking all I'm going to do is just step off onto the trampoline. I will then catch myself like you do, like this. This is the universal sign of catching yourself. And I, would, I was going to do that. And then my kids would be like in awe. Dad's incredible. Did you see him land that? That was my thought. Okay? So I decide I'm going out there. I'm going to do it. As I'm looking down on the tramp, got everyone off, so I didn't want anyone to die. And I decide I'm not going to jump in the middle of the trampoline. Because if I jump in the middle, my momentum will carry me off. And I will then have to land on the hard mother earth. <laughs> By the way, notice a female. And um, I'm, I'm, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to jump closer to the edge. Okay? And I'm not that stupid either, ladies, that I'm going to jump on the springs. Duh. That would be dumb. And that would hurt like a mother, by the way. By the way, another female. And um, well, there's a theme here. And so I'm going to just jump kind of about a foot, two feet in from the, from the springs. And then I was going to go up, and I was going to kind of go just over center. I thought it all out. And then I was just going to catch myself like that. And then my kids would stand up like, <laughs> and the crowd would cheer. That was the idea. And um, so it's my turn. I'm going to do it. No big deal. And my ego's like, yeah, nail it. And my intellect is like, rest in peace, Brother Townsend. You will now die right here. So we tried to shut that one up. So I take the step off, and right when I was off, I thought, no. <laughs> That's all I thought was, no, we're not doing that. But the funny thing is, is once you're off, there's no more no's. It's all yes. I didn't know that. I didn't think that went through. So I'm, gonna, I'm falling, and I'm like, no big deal. What you're going to do is you're going to hit, and I hit. Okay, by the way, coolest news ever. I nailed it. I nailed the little imaginary X that I wanted to hit. I nailed it. Okay, that is the only good news of the whole story. I nailed it. And then what I noticed is as I'm going down, there was like no pushback. There was like no resistance, like pushing up against me. Weird. So I'm like, why is there no resistance? And your brain starts calculating. You're losing altitude, and there's no grabby grab on the trampy tramp. So there's no gravity grab, and I keep going down, and my brain's like three feet, two and a half feet, two feet, one and a half foot, one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. No gravity grab on the boom! And I hit Mother Earth. She's a very solid woman. Which was bad in that moment. It was very bad. The worst was the bolts of lightning that shot up my spinal cord and my mouth slamming shut. And all I heard was ringing. Okay, and I'm sure it wasn't the phone. And um, then the next thing I was thinking is, ouch, that hurt. And then I realized my body had been redirected to about 45 degrees, which in and of itself is not a problem unless you're pulled taut in a springy device. And there was this moment of, oh, jeez. And the next thing I heard was, foink. And now I'm heading like a bullet off of my trampoline. And I only could look down at my kids that were in awe. So I knew I was making a memory. So half of my goal was accomplished, and now I'm flying, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, geez, my intellect says, this is where you're going to die. And my ego says, shut it, you stupid intellect. My ego just says, look how smart Mel ego is. It just says, land it. Land it. Come on. 
Christy Yamaguchi. Is she, is she a gymnast? She's a skater, yeah. Well, that's all I thought was Christy Yamaguchi. Which is pretty much why it didn't work. Because if this was ice, I would have nailed it. But I didn't. So I'm flying, and I'm thinking, land it. Just land it. Okay, I'm going to land it. And as I'm flying, my head starts to get below my feet. Which makes landing it near impossible. So I'm flying, my head's going down, my feet are going up. My intellect says, oh, you're going to have a spinal cord injury. Thank you, left brain. My right brain says, shh. Just run it off on your hands. Run it off on your hands. Because how hard could it be to stop your massive body by just catching it on your hands at 45 miles an hour? Then run it off and then flip over, like do a Yamaguchi, and then land on your feet, and then get it one of these. Oh, I was sure I was going to do that. And yeah, just run it off. Run it off on your hands. I'll do that. And then I'm kind of getting really down where my head is like totally down. And my feet are totally up. And now my arms aren't really up. They're not out in front of me. They're just kind of behind me. And now I can't run it off on my hands. And I'm a foot off the ground. And I think, oh boy, this is going to hurt. That's my left brain. My right brain says, shh. You'll be fine. Just use your face. Run it off on your jaw and your cheek. But close your eyes so you're not blinded by the glass or the grass coming in your eyes at 500 miles an hour. I'm like, that is such a good idea. And then my ego says, hey, shh, dude, dude, one more thing. When you hit, don't make that sissy grunt noise that you made when your feet hit the ground and all the air evacuated from your system. Because that's not manly. And I'm like, you're so cool! And I hit, skidded across the grass with my feet curled up behind me. Nothing more manly than that. Skidded across the grass, my feet curled up, and then right before they fell down and hit the ground, my ego woke up and said, get up, get up, get up, get up. You look so stupid, man. You look so stupid, get up. So I immediately popped up. I couldn't feel anything. And blood was squirting out my leg. And my kids were like, they're like, you're bleeding down. I'm like, shut up. Get out of here! Shut up! My mom's gonna kill you! Don't tell mom! Mom does not need to know about this! This is just between us kids! And I went inside, just dead. And for some reason I needed a nap. I felt real sleepy. So I went and took a nap and my wife came in. What should she say to maintain my ego? What should she say? You know what she would say. She'd just come in and say, oh, you are such a stud. Oh my gosh. I've never seen a man more manly than you are. A big, bold stud. Yamaguchi. She didn't say any of that. You know what she said? <laughs> what's, what's, what's wrong with your face? But what? No, the other side where all the grass and dirt is. I, yeah, I've been working in the yard. Yeah, I heard you were really working the yard. That was funny. Why'd you do that? Why? Why? Why is she asking me why? Why? Because she's evil. You know why she's asking? Why she wants me to talk? What does she want me to say? I'm an idiot! Pulled off a Yamagoo! Didn't even get to the cheek. Just gooed it right up all over the lawn. It was gooey. Hurt like a mother. Are we gonna, by the way, am I gonna want to talk about this? No, just, do we have a gun? Get my gun. We don't have a gun, honey. Go buy me a gun. Daddy needs to put himself out right now. We don't want to talk about it. Have you noticed? 
So here's what I believe. So instead I'll fight you. I did not fall off the tramp. I've jumped off it. Oh, you meant to do that. For sure. <laughs> Who could travel halfway across the yard? Nobody in this family's ever done that. <laughs> and no one ever will. So we fight, and my ego gets involved, and your need to talk about it gets involved, and we fight about it. Have you ever noticed it doesn't work? I call it the smoke. Everybody in this room has smoke in their life. You have it with your friends, your neighbors, right? You have it with your old girlfriend that won't talk to you from high school because you Yamaguchi, her husband, her, her boyfriend, I mean, she probably wasn't married in high school yet, just a technicality from a marriage expert. Uh, so you're fighting with your friends, you're fighting with your neighbors, you ever fought with your kids over something stupid that wasn't even the real issue? No, 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 you're wearing a belt. You're wearing a belt. Get it on or mommy will get you. You scare me, mommy. You haven't seen fear, you wait. So all of a sudden, you're sitting there fighting. I call the smoke because the smoke never goes away. The number one killer of people in a relationship is the smoke. The number one killer of people in a house fire is the smoke, right? People don't burn to death. They're way dead before the fire gets to them. Same thing in our relationships. We're so tired and worn out because you're fighting over your blog and how much time you spend. You want to bet it's not the time on your blog that's really the issue. You ever notice that? You want to bet that it's not how much sex you have with your husband that's really the issue. Well, the Joneses say they do it three times a week. The Joneses are freaks, okay? They're freak shows. I'm on the internet every day. I asked my fan club and they said, you're a loser. It's twice annually. Okay? You give me lots of money for the blog, it's three times annually. We can fight about it all day long. I say that's not the real issue. What I believe is the real issue, I call them the seven basic needs. I believe every relationship has seven basic needs. Every single one on earth has seven needs. And if these needs aren't met, it causes all of the problems. So as you're working with all of these people, sharing your ideas, talking about stuff, helping them solve problems, I'd make sure you're focusing on seven things. I promise you, sitting down with literally thousands of people working in relationships every single day, it comes down to seven things. You ready for them? By the way, I didn't tell you this. This is being recorded. Was I? I may have gone too far. I probably walked right past my camera. Drop that. And, um, oh, hold on. You gotta look good. Um, this is being recorded, and we're going to send it to anybody that wants it for free. And you can hook it up with your peeps. Snap! 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 Ouch! I don't snap my back! Uh, we're also going to do this, because one of my goals is to get... I have a ton of content. I have a class I teach every week, an hour and a half of new content for women every single week about how to deal with those men you know, and life, and coaching, and all these stuff. So I have all this content I'll give you for free. So if any of you need free content, any of you want, we cut down little clips, you can put it on your blogs, you can use it any way you want. Sign up at the back, we'll either send you this if that's all you want, if you want to talk about maybe getting some of the content for your blog, you can do that. Um, but as part of all of this, I teach this thing. I even wrote a book on it, okay? It's called Starve Stuff. Seven basic needs. Here they go. Are you ready? Basic need number one is safety. If you want to be in a relationship with anyone long term, they've got to feel safe with you. If you want the people that follow you on a blog to be around long term on your blog, they must feel safe with what you're saying. Safe means five things. That you're safe with them physically so nothing's going to hurt us. Think about your marriage. Do you feel safe with your partner? You gotta feel safe socially so you're not gonna be embarrassed. My wife, for some odd reason, which I do not understand, feels not, she does not feel socially safe with me. <laughs> okay, whatever, talk to my hand. I'm not gonna say anything, but she's at the back table, back where my stuff is, don't look at her, don't look at her, don't look at her. Just do that girl out of the corner of your eye thing that you all do so well. Um, so you got to feel socially safe with somebody, you got to feel um, physically safe, socially safe, you've got to feel emotionally safe. I've got to feel like I can share what's in my heart. If I can't tell you what I'm really feeling in my heart, I don't feel safe with you. 
So instead, we fight about everything else. I've got to feel financially safe. And I've got to feel what I call spiritually safe. Spiritually safe means we have the same value system. Do you feel safe with your partner? When you fight about how much your purse costs, bet you a thousand bucks it's not the purse that's the issue. I bet it's a safety issue about finances. Make sense? And until you learn to cut out of the smoke and get down to the real star stuff, you're going to miss the point. And then you argue about something stupid. Sometimes you might get this. It happens to me on my site. People will write in and then give you some feedback that was unsolicited. Thanks. My little male ego's like, crush her! Cut her off of your existence! And then everyone around is like, relax, man, relax. We love you. You rock. They'll take care of it. Honestly, when they get down, I bet it's one of the seven needs that aren't being met. They don't like what you say. They don't like how you said it. They don't feel safe with what you're going to do with their information or whatever, whatever your issues are. Do you feel safe? Do you trust? Second basic need is trust. If you want to have somebody around with you a long time, they've got to trust you. I believe there's two things they've got to trust. They've got to trust your character, that you're honest and decent. You buy that? And they've got to trust that you're competent and have a clue. Nobody goes to a doctor that is really honest but highly incompetent. Oh, I love him. He's so special. That guy's the most honest person in the world. Yeah, but didn't he kill like four people last week? I know. But he means well. To trust somebody, you've got to trust character and competency. So think about a problem you're having with somebody in your life. Is it a safety issue? Is it a trust issue? You can fight all day long about what you caught your husband doing. And he can, it's not porn. It's Victoria's Secret. You can fight all day about it, and I promise you that doesn't make the pain go away, does it? That's just the smoke. Whatever the issues are you're fighting about, I'll bet you bucks it's either safety or trust. The third basic need is appreciation. If you want to be with somebody forever, you got to feel appreciated, don't you? My wife feels completely appreciated differently than I do. Completely different. She wants me to clean, vacuum, okay? In a maid outfit, whatever. <laughs> I do it for her because I love her. I would rather be touched. She'd rather have me clean. And I'm like, well, I'll clean if you'll touch. She's like, well, I'll touch if you'll clean. I'm like, you first. <laughs> It's like, no, you first, no, you first, and then we just go to bed mad at each other. It's weird. It happens every night. So we have safety, we have trust, we have appreciation. R stands for respect. If you want someone around forever, you got to respect them, don't you? If I don't feel like you respect me, why would I keep giving you my brilliant advice? And if you don't feel safe with me, why would you want to be around? Now watch that. That tends to be the most common male-female issues. Women tend to have more fear statistically. Did you know that? Women have, have a feeling of fear more than men do. By the way, men have fear. They just wouldn't call it that. I feel unsettled. I feel strange. Women have fear. Men have shame issues. So what ends up happening is women tend to feel fear when they're afraid they want to talk. When you talk, you shame me. So your fear begets my shame. My shame begets your fear. That's the starve spiral right there. So think about it in your relationships. Do you feel safe? Do you feel like you can trust these people? Do you feel appreciated by them? Do you feel respected by them? B stands for validation. Do you feel like they validate you? Do they understand you? Do they encourage you? E stands for um, encouraged. Do you feel like they're your cheerleader? They've got your back. Are they behind you encouraging you on your blog? You know what encouragement means? It comes from the root word courage, which comes from the French word cur which means heart. To encourage somebody, they've got to get in your heart. For all the husbands of all of the bloggers, for all of the partners that are out there, are you encouraging your wife or friend to be a blogger? If it's in her heart, let it out. You've got to start changing the world. If you don't change it, who will? Who's going to change the world if you don't? Me? Ah! don't think so. You are. And if you don't get encouragement, you might stop sharing this great thing you're doing. How many times have you lifted one person's heart and not even really known it because they didn't write to you and tell you that? 
How many times have you gotten a letter from one person? One other person. My favorite quote is a quote from Emerson that says, um, it's basically the concept of the divine spark. He says, inside each of us is a divine spark. Okay, so whether you believe in God or whatever or not, I do and I believe inside each of you is a spark of divinity. And as when you live up to that spark, you unconsciously give other people to live up, the, the power to live up to it. You remember Mary Ann Williamson? She talks about that divine spark. Our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Your greatest fear as a blogger is not that you're weak. Your greatest fear is that you're powerful beyond measure. Mary Ann Williamson teaches, it is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, talented, and gorgeous? She says, who are you not to be? You are a being of infinite worth. Your playing it small does not serve the world. Um, when you are afraid of succeeding, you unconsciously give other people the opportunity to be fearful. But when you live up to that which is brightest and best inside of you, you unconsciously give permission to the world to live up to what's best in them. As bloggers, guess what you're doing? You're taking your spark and you're sharing it with others. You know what that creates? Safety and trust and appreciation and respect and validation and encouragement. And the last one is dedication. Now I know at least someone's dedicated to me, even if it's not someone in my family, it's someone I can go to their blog every single week, every single day, every single month, and have a feeling of my divine spark. I believe that's what you're doing. I think it seems trivial, but I promise you, we have no clue how powerful you are. Have you ever heard the quote that says, you can count the seeds in an apple, but you can't count the apples in a seed. I can go open up an apple and count ten seeds. There they are, ten of them. But how many apples are going to come from one seed? And you know what? Those are the seeds you're out there planting. You're sparking people's divinity inside of them. You're lifting them to a higher level. You're taking them to a completely different place. And when you lift one, you lift all of us. I seriously believe that. When I know you're dedicated to me and you don't even know me, you're speaking to something that's bigger than you and me. You're speaking to something that we can all get our hands around. Do you know how much we could change the world if 320 bloggers went out there and just offered what's in their heart? We changed the world. And you know what's crazy? I don't even need you to start with the world. Just start with yourself. Start with the partner that you're with. Start with your children. Start being present. When you sit down to do your blog and you're like frustrated and nervous and overwhelmed, and I got to get two of them out. And... <sighs> Big deep breath and just get in the moment. One of my favorite quotes is by, um, it's just the simplest thought I've ever had, honestly, and I stole it from St. Francis of Assisi. You want a really cool thing to put on your blog? Go look up the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Saint, uh, San Francisco is named after him. And I don't even use the whole thing. All I use is one line. It's a very simple prayer that he says at the very end of his prayer. He says, Lord, grant me to be an instrument of thy peace. Let me be an instrument of goodness. So as I sit in a room with 320 people that are tired of blogging talk, which you probably never could be, I understand. I look at some of the most incredible, phenomenal souls on earth. And you're out there impacting millions of incredible, noble souls. So, here's your challenge. Those seven basic needs spell starved. Starved people starve people. We're all starving a little bit, okay? Some of us just have the munchies. Num, 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 num. Some of us are emaciated. Your job now is to start feeding. You've already been doing it. Keep it up. It's noble. Starve people, starve people. That's um, one of my favorite things in the world is to recognize we all have basic needs. Carl Jung said that which is most personal is most universal, and that's what you're all out there pitching. You're teaching the most universal concepts of life. It doesn't even matter what your blog's about. You're teaching the idea that people are human and they're special. Now, 
Two more quotes, and we are out of, I'm out of here. I think you guys got to sit and hang out for a while. Or get to, sorry. Sounds like a lot of work. Um, there's this one guy named Gandhi. You ever heard of him? Yeah, good guy. He, um, he says this. Well, let's start with another one. There's another guy by the name of Victor Hugo. You ever heard of Victor? Victor wrote a book called The Miserables. Okay, it sounds really bad. Great play. Good music. And in the musical, or in the, in the book called Les Miserables, he teaches this really cool idea. And this is, I just thought of it when I think of you. He says, we must be like the bird. Okay, think of a bird who, halting in its flight, on a limb too slight, feels the limb give way beneath him, yet sings, knowing that it hath wings. One more time. We must all be like the bird who's about to land on a limb that can't hold it. And when the limb breaks beneath the bird, what does it do? It sings. Why is the bird singing? Because it has wings. Birds don't get their confidence from where they're perched. You shouldn't get your confidence from how many people you have following you. That's your perch. You should get your confidence from knowing how to connect and relate to people. I think in this conference you've been learning principles of blogging, principles of social networking, right? You've been learning skills and tools. Those skills and tools and principles are what should give you confidence, not your numbers. You don't right now necessarily have to influence everyone, but there are certain people I believe you need to influence. And I believe those are the ones that already have your following, that are already following you. You already have their heart. Be like the bird who halting in its flight, you should have your confidence from your ability to fly. The birds fly on principles, lift, drag, and thrust. Birds don't fly like an airplane. If I took a pilot and a bird and I hung them out over the Grand Canyon, one of them would sing. And one of them would beg for an airplane. It's your airplane is not just your sight. Your airplane is you. Your confidence should come from inside, deep inside your heart, because you possess the principles of knowing how to do this. You possess, you possess the desire of changing people's lives, which is why you're doing it. I know that's true. You have the power. It's already in you. It's not just in some of us, it's in every one of us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give permission to, for people to do the same. As we are all liberated from our own fear, Marianne Williamson teaches, we automatically liberate the presence of fear in others. You are noble, you are great, you are divine. Don't ever forget it. One more quote by Gandhi. Are you ready? Gandhi says, you must become the change you seek in others. If you want more safety, then you learn to be more safe. Think of these people at home you might be struggling with. You want more trust, then be more trustworthy. You want more appreciation from life, then be appreciative. You want more respect from your fellow bloggers, then be respectful and respect them on their sites. You want more validation, then learn to validate. You want more encouragement, then be encouraging. You want more dedication? Then be in. Get in the game. If you were ever thinking, maybe I'm not fit for this, tell yourself to shut its cake hole. <laughs> Dig in deep and get in your heart, okay? You become the change.